Gulf of Mexico. Beneath these waters lies some of the world's richest natural gas fields. Now, an ambitious plan is underway to harvest that energy from the ground. It's called the Independence Project. The goal? Drill wells and lay pipeline to get the natural gas to a central processing platform and then to shore where it's sold. Natural gas networks have been around for a long time. Okay, coming down. But no project's ever been attempted in waters this deep. For years, thousands of underwater wells have lined the shallow waters of the Gulf of Mexico. They supply 20% of the natural gas to cook and heat homes in the United States. But the demand continues to grow, and the wells in the Gulf are already working at capacity. Energy companies have long known that gas reserves existed in the Gulf's deep water. But the technology didn't exist to drill here, beyond the continental shelf and 9,000 feet down until now. It's the most daring effort yet in the race for more energy from the deep sea. A team of mega machines has been hard at work for months, building a vast deep sea gas network. They have five main challenges. Drill 15 wells through nearly two miles of water and almost three miles of sea floor in an 1800 square mile gas field. Lay pipeline connecting each well to a central processing platform. Install cables along the pipeline so that engineers on the platform can control the flow of gas from each well. Drive massive pilings to anchor the central processing platform to the ocean floor. And finally, build a huge pipeline to deliver the gas from the processing platform 135 miles to land. Construction on the processing platform is underway here in Ingleside, Texas. Once it's installed in the open ocean, this platform will be the hub of the network, purifying the natural gas and sending it back to shore. But first, there's a gas network to build. Enter the Mega Movers. The Deep Water Millennium will tackle the first job, drilling the wells. Next, the Lower Lay will build a network of pipelines to connect the wells to the central platform. The Toysa Perseus will run control cables along the pipeline. And only one ship can tackle the next step, building the monster pipeline to the shoreline. The Solitaire. Installing the huge anchor pilings is the job of the boulder. Meanwhile, another team of mega machines constructs the massive gas processing platform. The platform is as big as a city block. In order to float above the gas fields in the Gulf, it must be attached to this huge four-towered hull, which is en route to the Gulf atop an amazing ship, the Mighty Servant Three. Mounting the huge platform on the hull will be one of the heaviest lifts ever. That's when the crane-like heavy lift device will swing into action. To get the network up and running, each of these machines will have to do its job perfectly. But Mother Nature can wreak havoc on even the best laid plans. The Gulf of Mexico is notorious for powerful storms, and summer is peak hurricane season. Seven major storms made 2005 the worst hurricane season on record and the most devastating in memory. This year could be even worse. The first job is getting the gas wells up and running. Months ago, the Deepwater Millennium drilled wells for this project. 
the ship's drill pipe reached 9,000 feet down to the sea floor and dug in. Then it punched through another three miles of sea floor to reach pockets of natural gas, an incredible five miles below the water surface. Now, the deep water millennium will answer the two billion dollar question. Will enough gas flow freely to make this well worth tapping? To test the gas flow, the ship must gently lower this delicate column of valves and sensors to the bottom of the well. The Millennium is perfectly designed for the job. She's a drill ship. At 726 feet, she stretches longer than two football fields. A huge tower on her deck called a derrick will lift the column and lower it into the water through a hole in the middle of the ship. The column will descend to the well through this pipe, almost 9,000 feet of steel tubing that stretches from the ocean surface all the way to the top of the well. Once the testing equipment is installed in the well, engineers on the ship can determine if natural gas is flowing freely. The Millennium's crew prepares to lower the testing column into the well pipe. You might be able to bump it out some more, Jason. It takes a delicate touch. Is it all the way up? If the column smacks into anything, it could damage the critical seals that keep gas in and water out. Right, watch your fingers, Harley. There's a bunch of places you can get bit. The crew lines up the column at the top of the well pipe and begins to lower it. Oh, oh. But suddenly, it stops descending. A jammed column could mean costly delays. If we change that assembly out, then it would, you're probably looking at 10 to 12 hours. Get ready to tell him to stop. If we start stroking his lock, man, I want him to stop. 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 The crew examines the column to figure out what's gone wrong. It refuses to budge. They try to gently wiggle the test column. That's it. You gotta look. What you gotta do is you gotta push it that way. You wanna watch this uh, lock mantle? There it goes. We got it. That does the trick. Alright. That's good. And the column finally slides into place. You want to verify that in the book? It'll take two days for the testing equipment to reach its destination. Two days before the crew can answer the critical question. Will a well, drilled in the deepest water yet, actually work? The Deepwater Millennium hovers above a gas well in the Gulf of Mexico. After several setbacks and delays, the crew gets the sign they've been waiting for. The testing equipment has reached the well, 9,000 feet down. It's time to see if this well can produce for the Deep Sea Independence Project. Roger. With the touch of a computer screen, engineers open the valves deep inside the well, and gas begins to flow. The crew monitors every sensor and valve. The test is a success. Gas is flowing freely from the well. The Millennium has successfully gotten 15 wells up and running. Now it's time for step two of the independence project. Laying the pipeline that will connect each well to the processing platform. It'll take a vast network of pipes laid precisely on the sea floor. Now a new mega mover takes charge. The All Seas Lorelei is a pipeline building pro. At 600 feet, she's longer than the Washington Monument is tall. A massive pipe manufacturing facility fills nearly two-thirds of her hull. Off her stern, a 200-foot guide called a Stinger lowers the pipeline to the sea floor. 
Creating the network of pipelines is like building a city sewer system nearly two miles below the ocean surface. The lower lay's biggest challenge is laying each of the pipelines on their predefined pathways. Deviate even a few inches and it will be a massive tangle of steel. The lower lay has just a few months to complete the pipelines before the gas processing platform arrives. And summer is prime time for hurricanes. She's got to lay this pipe before bad weather catches up to her. Below her decks is a massive hold with over 22,000 pounds of steel pipes. The pipes can't be welded at the bottom of the ocean. That happens here in a high-tech assembly process called the firing line. Massive elevators lift 40-foot sections from the hold and slide them into the firing line. The pipes seen here will form a single pipeline 45 miles long. Amazingly, even steel pipe over an inch thick bends like a garden hose under its own weight. 12,000 feet, over two miles of pipe are suspended between the ship and the sea floor in a giant curve. The lower lay will work around the clock to spit out up to three miles of pipeline every day, making her one of the fastest pipe laying vessels in the world. With the wells and pipeline construction underway, it's time for step three in the independence project. Laying the cables that will control each well's gas flow. It's a job for the Toysa Perseus. She's one of the only vessels that can install these cables in such deep water. Her huge reels hold miles of the thick cables and her aft deck is bigger than three basketball courts. It needs to be. That's where the Perseus carries its giant cable connectors. The crew places a connector next to each well and then runs the cable along the pipeline all the way back to the processing hub. These cables are an essential part of the network. By supplying the electronic and hydraulic power to open and close the well's valves, they'll allow an engineer on the processing platform to control the flow of gas from a well as much as 45 miles away. The first step is to carefully spin the cable out of the hole. Below deck, this massive reel holds the longest control cable of the project. 13 miles long, weighing 1,200 tons, the weight of 700 automobiles. The end of the cable is threaded into a curved guide to prevent kinking the delicate internal elements. A tricky maneuver that requires handing off the cable between two cranes. Safely in the guide, it's lowered to the deck. The crew attaches a stabbing pin to the end of the control cable. Now, they must lock the pin into the connector already installed on the sea floor. It's like putting a plug into a socket, except that the cord is nearly two miles long. Two huge tensioners close in on the cable. Their tractor-like grip holds the entire weight of the cable as it's lowered. It's a straight shot through a hole in the middle of the ship, 9,000 feet down. There, the real challenge begins, 